spectrum. Spectrum is a huge word, so I'm going to get right to a qualifier with it. Optical spectrum, which is light waves, what we call light. So the Google question is, what spectrum do solar panels absorb? Or what spectrum of light do solar panels absorb? Now, light specifies what we're talking about. I'm not talking about a spectrum of colors in the air. Well, yes, I am. That's light. Okay, I'm not talking about a psychological spectrum like autism. Autism is very much reliant on attribute data. Um, so, another story. So this is a precise measurement science. And depending on what type of crystals are in your solar panel defines what spectrum of light energy they will absorb. They will use. And with that, you'll find efficiencies for different materials how well they use this light and you'll notice that spectrum for different materials changes subtly but not very much. So these panels are absorbing some kind of specific frequencies of light, specific range of light waves as we measure them, light, which means they can only absorb the energies at certain frequencies of light. But light is a reflection, is a <laughs> correlation to electrons. So you, that energy has to be able to get electrons moving at a certain, certain frequency in order to generate excess electrons, create electrons on the surface of that photovoltaic cell and make them available for your battery or your lights. So from an electrician's perspective, all he's looking at is the voltages in and out. Low voltage electricians, uh, it's a nice permit or license to have in the state of Oregon or anywhere. <coughs> and not too hard to get. So that's as hard or as simple as it is. It's, you buy a solar cell with some specs and you connect it up to something. But you want to know how efficient it is. And if you want to know how efficient it is, you can go do these types of research to look for the best solar panel materials. In a manufacturer that prints specifications, you can understand. But while you're buying the solar panel, keep in mind, none of it gets recycled, which is a shame. Now, you might bring it somewhere to be thrown away, but like those lithium batteries, the bottom line is the lithium isn't recycled yet. I'm not sure what they do with it, but it's not put back into more batteries. Unless something changed in the last year or two, that recently. So the sales about the spectrums, so many spectrums. There's a spectrum of the quality of batteries. You can do this same analysis with batteries. They have a way in a they like to be charged. If you don't do it correctly, they'll overheat. They have a specific voltage they should be charged to. They're designed and engineered, and the specifications all wrap around that, how many life cycles you get out of a battery. And you charge it with sunlight, <laughs> photons. But photons are just a reflection of the energy being transferred through the air to a device. And those crystals ring. It's what they do. The ringing makes them fluoresce. So now we're talking about a audible spectrum because ringing is something you can hear. So we need machines, electronics, in order to turn something we see into a ringtone maybe. And spectrometry does that. So you have to stay in your spectrum. The equations you use in one, one spectrum do not have the same denominator as the equations you use in other spectrums, and yet you'll see the similarities in those equations. You'll also see the dissimilarities in the conversations, because in the chemical world, those equations 
the efforts, the looks are at molecules, atoms and molecules. Yes, all the equations underneath that subatomic stuff matter, but the chemist assumes that the proofs fit and through his research and work learns that the proofs fit the equations and the equations fit the proofs in his work. And it becomes taken for granted just part of, hey, it's a body of knowledge somebody else built I'm standing on. So this spectrum conversation, the interaction of particles, the reason understanding that interaction of a photovoltaic cell, right, solar panels, with light itself, the spectrum of light. Light is an expression of electron energy, and it's complicated. And it doesn't matter unless there's nothing on the shelves in 7-Eleven, and then you go, shit, what went wrong? <laughs>